awareness of an all-pervading mysterious energy articulated in the infinite variety of natural phenomena seems to be the primordial experience of human consciousness awakening to an awesome universe filled with mysterious power not only is energy our primary experience energy is also the primary concern of modern physics its ultimate term of reference in describing the most fundamental reality of the universe The Chinese have some exercises called Qigong and Tai Chi. Maybe some of you are familiar with it. Anyway, one of the great exercises of the, both of those disciplines is gathering and sinking the Qi. And if you, it's a feeling you are gathering something when you gather, and that you are feeding your original mouth something you've gathered. This is the Chinese insight. You ask them, what is Qi? that you're gathering and, and centering here. What, what is this chi? And they say, oh, it's an energy. Why don't we just sort of guess that the energy they're gathering and feeding is consciousness. That sort of gives us a picture of consciousness we may not have. Let me illustrate this. Close your eyes and hold your hand up, your right hand up, and tell me when you feel something. Okay, we didn't have cheek to cheek, but we had chi to chi. <laughs> okay, <laughs> well that may seem like a little teensy proof of this mysterious fact that consciousness is like a wave that goes out to the stars, very intense right close by, and extremely intense in the center. And everybody is such a mysterious being. I believe that there are more mystics than, than, um, than mechanics in the spiritual life, but they don't know it. I believe that almost everybody that I have ever talked to out of any institution or, or beyond any boundary will relate at least one instance in life when they had a very impacting understanding that there was more than this life. I'm convinced that uh, people have more consciousness of, of uh, life beyond the life in front of them than they realize. I see that as a wisdom call, tap, tap. There's more here, tap, tap. You're not listening, tap, tap. But somehow or other, I know that I had my first um, consciousness of the presence of God when I was 12 or 13. And knew that there was enveloping me some sort of, of presence. I, I, I wouldn't have used the word energy then. Now I say it was an energy. It, it, it touched something in me and I touched something in that. And then I came to the monastery and deepened it. That, that, that presence then became not a cartoon figure of God, not God the grandfather, God the warrior, God the saint, but Godness, and then it uh, it became beyond the uh, the anthropomorphizing, making God uh, a, a human being writ large. I didn't need it anymore. I didn't need the face. I knew the feeling. I didn't. I didn't need uh, the the conversation. I saw the results. I, I I didn't need the magic because I saw the strength. I saw, everybody knows that magic is powered by something that is not magical. Mystery has no conscious empowerment by us at all. Mystery is that which we know exists because we see it in some manifestation. It is, it is demonstrated to us, but, but it is way beyond anything that up to this point, at least, we can use to explain its presence. You know, like the explanation of electricity uh, changed the whole world. 
the entire world was changed. And, but it didn't take away from the mystery. It only increased it. Where did that come from? How was that harnessed? What is it enabling? And we have a whole generation now who have no idea what is going on behind, behind the screen in these computers. I mean, way beyond us. We're going with it, and we're happy for what good it's doing. But in terms of being you and I being able to empower it, not at all. But within another 50 years, everybody in every generation will take it for granted. They've all, they will have all been educated in it. So m mystery is the thing that is, is demonstrable, is present, cannot be explained, at least now, but has some sort of powerful other, other existence existence. And that's enough to know. That's enough to know. I didn't, I didn't give up all the light bulbs in my, in my bedroom because I, I didn't know how, how uh, he did it. <laughs> I mean, come on, get real. This, this, this whole thing is a, is a ladder to the center of the mystery. The Newtonian, how would we say it, cosmology. Newtonian cosmology has been superseded by New in Einstein in cosmology and, and beyond that, right? So we're always talking about in our cosmology or our scientific overviews, uh, something approximate. Our cosmology is not reality, but reality is more mysterious than our cosmology. And this we have learned in contemporary physics. I mean, the Einsteinian universe just opened up new mystery, but then quantum mechanics uh, simply blew the minds out of physicists themselves uh, so that physicists have come to say things like this. The more you know about nature, the more you know you don't know. Instead of progressing in science to where we had better knowledge, and when you look back you see all kinds of things we learned through scientific research, but it didn't make the mystery any less. In fact, it made our experience of the mystery greater which means probably, very likely, uh, absolutely certainly, for I'm concerned, that the human mind is incapable of possessing absolute knowledge of nature. Let's take an example of the little photon, which is the, the smallest element of light, uh, as well as other things like electrons and protons and atoms. All of these things, these minute things that now define the fundamental particles or pieces or entities of the universe, have found to be in our scientific research manifesting themselves both as waves and particles. So they have two whole systems of mathematics, one for waves and one for particles that are examining the same little old photon. And you know in your mind that a wave is something that goes out through a medium forever, and a particle is something that's happening to something in one little particular space-time moment. How can the same thing be a particle and a wave? Well, it can't be. <laughs> a photon is not a wave, and a photon is not a particle. It just acts kind of like a particle part of the time. And it acts like a wave part of the time. And so what you really have out here in reality is a wavicle <laughs> or something you don't even have a name for. Now this is the state of physics and it brings physicists to their attention uh, that not only is physics approximate <laughs> and, and, and improvable, but it doesn't even give us a consistent picture of what we're looking at here. And these are the foundational parts of reality upon which all reality is constructed. And we don't even have a picture of it. We may not even be able to picture it. I don't know if that does anything to your mind, but it sort of blows mine. In this reality, we live and move and have our being. Spirituality is always about how we see, 
the great life is already working within us, and we only gradually learn how to say yes to this always existent life. What is this energy, this force, this presence that for much of my life I have remained only partially aware of? Yet now, I'm beginning to grasp a consciousness that I sense is also grasping me. I'm being invited to explore and practice a connection with this overpowering enigma. I'm learning to trust a flow, a force of consciousness, with the same intimacy with which I trust the force of gravity. I find within myself a growing fear and fascination as I consider a conscious relationship to this force. This inescapable force is with me. The force is with you. Shall we pretend it is not there? Or shall we connect with its power? Let's continue. <laughs> 